Father, we bless you right now, Lord God. We honor you. We love you. We exalt you. We admonish you right now, Lord God. We ask that you would have your way with us. Thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. We invite your presence in this place right now, Lord God. If you can just begin to magnify the Lord just for a few moments, y'all. Just, just thank make you, your body Jesus. give you glory to His name, worthy, make your body, worthy, make your worthy, mouth worthy, honor Jesus. Him right now above thank your emotions, you, above your strength, thank you for your power, above what's going right, thank above what looks like, like it's going wrong. Like you, Jesus. Father, I bless your name allow right me now, Lord God. Jesus, allow me to put because I know right now, Lord God, God, that life and death is in the power of my tongue. Father, we choose to live and eat the fruit of the life that you've given unto us, O oh God. And Father, you are our sword and our shield. You are our protector, Lord God. Hallelujah. You said that you would renew our strength. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you are found in the house, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for provision, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you for sustenance, Lord God. Help us continue on. We honor you right now. We honor you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, look to the person next to you and say, I know I'm glad that you made it tonight, man. I'm glad that you made it tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all made it tonight. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have every one of you here. Praise the Lord. Um had I not been so diligent in the world, had I not been so consistent in the world, it would seem as if this wouldn't make any sense. But when you think about the stuff that we did when we was in the world, and we did it faithfully, the years that we did it, the amount of foolishness that we put up with, <laughs> why would we not? Why would we fall short of man? Why would we fall short of beginning to mandate a commitment within ourselves to seek the Lord with all of our hearts regardless of what we're going through I purpose in my heart to say as the scripture says that I will bless the Lord at all times may his praise as always be found in my mouth so I definitely greet all of you for being here tonight and I'm pretty sure most of us share the same sentiments of just being a little tired and a little weary in certain things. But I'm so glad that our commitment, hallelujah, will still continue to far outweigh whatever appears to be convenient. And, um, and I just want to speak one more time and say that I'm so grateful for this past Friday, man, to think that it was seven of us that was in the building in the dark, man. And we prayed from 12.35 to 5.15 in the morning. And to think that, you know, Minister T and Minister Mwamba had actually done this before several times. And I'm thinking they probably gonna do it once a month or once every quarter. And God put something in their hearts to where they began to say, nah, we need to do this. We need to do this. 
What is it that the Lord can put in our hearts that will make us seek him in a way that goes beyond natural reasoning? When you're already tired, you think you're supposed to get more sleep. And don't get me wrong, sleep is good, man. I love some good sleep, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But what is it? <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Praise the Lord. But what is it that will make us say at a time that we could choose to be sleep? That there is an inner alarm going on on the inside of us that say, seek his face. That's what I believe is a sacrifice of praise. To seek him when you don't feel like it. I believe that when you can endure levels of affliction and still make yourself do what's right, I believe at that point, is no longer what's on you it becomes what's in you everybody says his presence is not just on me his presence is not just on me his presence is in me his presence is in me jeremiah was treating it like it just was on him he said man you know what cut you know like a movie cut that's enough i mean i ain't doing this no more See, I'm not preaching this word no more, man. It's like, I'm tired of people treating me this kind of way. They don't want to hear, Lord, they don't want to hear your word. What you talking about? I'm, I'm done. That boy said, I'm done. He said, but what I didn't realize is his word was in me like a fire that was in my bones. Fire. And when I said I wouldn't do it, I had already surrendered myself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's important for us to understand and recognize the mandate, hallelujah, of us really seeking his face, like for real, for real. For real, for real. So y'all, let's, let's get into this word tonight. Let's get into this word tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet every one of you in the name which is above every name, man. Thank y'all so much for just being in your positions. For the ministers of the gospel that just make sure that you get here. Minister T, man, thank you for getting here so quick. I left the school before Minister Mawam, man. Can't see how you still made it here before me. Man, them boys act like it be an ND 500 or something. Like, they gonna get here. But, but for real, though, I really appreciate y'all having... Man, that's not normal. That's not a common thing for people to be rushing to be faithful to God. You know, not getting a paycheck to come to church, but coming because it's something else that you're desiring that goes beyond a paycheck. Something that you're desiring that goes beyond the temporal. And yet you believe that you're laying up treasures in heaven. No thief can break in. Hallelujah. Nobody can steal it. Y'all, we, we laying up some stuff, y'all, that can't be stolen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody could put a gun to your head and this can't be stolen. Hallelujah. 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 So I truly thank the Lord for every one of y'all for being here, man, and pressing your way. To all of you queens that are in the building both in person and online. Praise the Lord. Sister Nala, thank you for coming and check us out tonight. Praise the Lord. Brother Jay, man, thank you for coming, man. We just, y'all, give God a hand clap of praise, man, because Brother Jay, he was, he was here when, when, we had, when we had kingdomhood. And I met him for the first time. And, um, he forgot his Bible here, and I praise the Lord that he did. It gave him another reason to come back tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He could have just got his Bible and said, man, I see y'all when I see you, you know what I mean? But he chose to still stay in fellowship, man, and I, I truly thank God for that. Y'all, let's go ahead and get into this word, man. If we go back to where we started, I'm kind of um, going back to what we was talking about this past Sunday, Soul Searchers. Soul searches. Jesus said that he came to seek and save those who are lost. 
Jesus said, which one among you that if you lost one sheep, he said, would you not leave 99 and go after one? Everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. Yeah, because see, because if you don't look at it like you're just that important, you'll be thinking that you're not important and that everybody will go on without you. But the Lord said, nah, I'll leave 99 to go find that. Everybody said, everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. Yes, sir. Like, see, you ain't going, you know, I mean, you got some stuff that you might lose. And if it's, yo, come on, y'all, think about it. how many of y'all didn't lose some stuff before? Hallelujah. I still, like, I was just about to say, I remember he was talking about the Medidas pants. About a year ago, he was talking about somebody took that boy pants. Oh, that was John. Somebody. Oh, John took his pants. <laughs> but just think about it. There's some things that if you lose, you're not about to let it go like that. You about to fight for it. You about to start searching. He said, think about a woman that if she had precious silver coins and if she lost one, the scripture said, man, she going to start tearing the house up looking for it because of that value on one that was misplaced. Everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. Man, you, you don't ever think that if you don't show up that you're not counted. Don't ever think that if you don't do what you're supposed to do, that you won't be missed. Nah, something ain't right when you're not there. You, you got to know that there is a, a alteration in the atmosphere when you don't show up. And when you do show up, it's almost like there's a peace that comes into place. And just because they don't know. They may think it's just your smile. They may just think, oh, there she goes. She's so cool. No, it's more than just being cool. Yes, sir. It's what I'm care because it's not just on me. It's in me. Hallelujah. And now the footsteps of a good man, they're ordered by the Lord. So now I got it. Y'all thought it was just me, but it's more than me. Y'all don't realize Jesus said when you enter into that place, let them know that heaven is with me. Yes, sir. Everybody say heaven is with me right now. Heaven is with me right now. Heaven is with us right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that means that y'all, we got to be careful to protect what we possess. I have the kingdom on the inside of me. Y'all repeat that. I have the kingdom living on the inside of me. I have the kingdom living on the inside of me. Uh, I need y'all to understand. They got some things that's fighting against you that don't want you to come in alignment with this confession. Because this, this confession is the you here aligning with the you there. The one who you were before the foundations of the world. The one that made you say no. The Lord said, who shall I send? I'm talking about the you that said, send me. Hallelujah. And like being born into a world where like all of your memory been erased and you don't even know who you are. You could be a woman that got six children. You could be somebody up under a bridge and all of a sudden it takes a word from the Lord and you like, how did I get here? I remember who I am now. And all of a sudden it's like the light switch cut on. And now you say, wait a minute, how did all this darkness get in my life? Why was I, why was I tolerating this? Somebody say no more. No, no more. more. Turn the light on. Turn the light on. Show up. Yes, sir. Wake up. Yes, sir. Why is it important for us to wake up? Because right here in Psalm 14, I'm trying to help us and help us to be delivered from a wicked mindset. Psalm 14. Without the presence of the Lord, without the will of God, without him not just being on me, but in me. My mindset will be messed up. My words will be uncontrollable. I'm not afraid to talk about how much I used to cuss, man. And I used to look back like, if I cuss so much, how is it I could be in front of my parents and act like I never cuss? What is that? Mm, that was me too. Oh, yeah. 
You mean to tell me I got more reverence for my parents than I do for God? I got more reverence for the one that's only limited to one particular location wow. than the one who's everywhere. Yes, sir. Wow. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro. Yes, sir. Over the whole earth. His spirit is swift. Hallelujah. His word is quick. Yes. Powerful. Everybody's, I got that word on the inside. I got that word on the inside. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm that one. I'm that I'm one. I'm that one that got that word. Yes, sir. I'm that one that got his spirit. I'm that spirit. one. Hallelujah. Look what this word says, man. Psalm 14 and 1. I'm not this one. <laughs> I'm not this one. Psalm 14 and 1. The fool has said in his heart. Yes, sir. That there is no God. They are all corrupt. They have done abominable works. You can't come back from that. You done already did it. You done already messed up. There is none that does good. None, none that has ever done good. Nobody doing good. And nobody that will ever do good. He said but that's the confession. Of what kind of person? A fool. That's like a person saying to the most high, that person is beyond your grasp. You can't change that one. And that's why Samuel told Saul, oh yeah, you chose and God has given you a shot, boy. He said, I'm going to let you know that the way you're going to know, as you walk and you're going to see some men coming down from the mountain and them boys are going to be prophesying and the spirit of the Lord is upon them. And the moment you make contact with them, the same spirit on them is going to come on you. Hallelujah. Everybody said going to come on him. Come on him. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but everybody say he's in me. He's in me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let nothing in this world. Yo, every time we get confronted with wicked stuff, y'all, it's trying to get in us to try to change <laughs> the occupancy. It tries to, to try to make the one who's living in me to try to make him get out of me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's like a musical chair. You know, that's why when somebody's just religious, they don't understand that it's not good to be in a church and act one way. And then when you out, you somebody else. And they don't, we, a lot of times we don't even realize it. There is none that does good. But verse number two says, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that understood this word, boy, and decided to seek God. Everybody said, that's me. I'm that one. That's me. I'm that one. I'm that one. I'm seeking him right now, man. I'm seeking the Lord right I'm now. I'm seeking him. The fool is saying this again. Verse number three. They have all turned aside, man. They all abandoned their faith. They have all together become filthy. Hallelujah. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity absolutely no knowledge? Like you ain't never heard about doing better. I see what you're doing now. But you never heard that you can change? You have no keys. You have no information. You have nobody you can call. Nobody has ever shined a light. Nobody spoke truth to you. He said, have they no knowledge at all? And you sit there and watch them eat up my people the same way people eat bread from outback, man. Or who got good bread, yo? Who at what place got real good bread? Texas Roy. He said, you mean to tell me you can watch them eat up my people like that bread at Texas Roadhouse? And they savoring that bread. 
Cheddar's, I was just about to say Cheddar's bread. African market. Man, African market was, yo, listen. He says, whatever bread you think of that is like a delicacy, God says we could be guilty of watching God's people be consumed just like they eat some good bread. So it's, it's time for us to, we got to do something about this, y'all. Let's turn right now to the book of Luke. Hallelujah. Luke 18. I'm just trying to help us to understand. Everybody say, I'm a soul searcher. I'm a soul searcher. I'm a soul searcher. Hallelujah. We're looking for people who actually belong to God. Might not even know they belong to God. They might not have known before. But you're going to know today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look what this word says. Luke 18. And this is actually coming into a parable. Where it's talking about an unjust judge. This judge, the scripture says he didn't fear God and didn't care about man. Had no revelation of God. Isn't that something? Somebody who's in a position of authority. And yet there's someone that occupies the position that don't even believe in God. And they don't care about nobody. And the scripture says that there was this woman who was a widow. Yes, sir. She didn't have a husband. Husband was dead and said she wanted her situation rectified so bad that she kept on bothering a judge that didn't even care about her. Get on away from here. Nobody worrying about you. Get on. And she kept coming. Banging on the door. Man, get on away from here. That's how we think that God is treating us sometimes. When we pray and we're not getting our prayer, we act like... God is looking at us like, like get on away from me. Ain't nobody worrying about that. And the Lord said, wait a minute. I can use somebody that really don't care about you. And make them give you what you need because of your passion. Hallelujah. God said, even an enemy is not outside of my grasp. Even somebody that didn't care about you. God, do y'all realize that? God can command a blessing from the enemy. Huh. The enemy could be looking in your face saying they can't stand you. Walking away from you can't stand you. And all of a sudden because what was just put in them. Hey, I heard you needed this. And you looking at him like, nah, I know this Negro don't like me. <laughs> and next thing you know, they give it to you. Y'all know how we do. They give it to you. You like, Lord, what this is. Man. Uh, some of us have been in, some of us be in, threw it away. Some of us, I, I, this is a trick, a trick, a trap. Somebody act like it's trick or treat or something. Guess what? But God told David, sit down until I make your enemy. Yes, sir. And David say, all of y'all waiting on me? And y'all fix this for me? Ah. <laughs> and the Lord said, even if you drink any deadly thing. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Come on, I'll take By no means. Yes, sir. You know why? Because what's in me Hallelujah. is stronger than anything that can come against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I received that word. I received that word. My God. Look what the scripture says. Look at the testimony of an unjust judge. Look at verse number five. Verse number five. Yet, because this widow 
It's troubling me, man. She getting on my nerves. I, let me go ahead and give her what she looking for. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. So you mean to tell me giving you your blessing is better than denying you of your blessing? Because now the one that's holding your blessing is being tormented because something in you is irritating something on the inside of them. And they realize now the only thing I could do to get rid of you is to give you what you came for. Verse number six. And the Lord said, do you hear what that unjust judge said? Look what he says in verse number seven. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Hallelujah. God is searching for his souls. Searching for the ones that he called. He said, are you wondering why I would leave 99? Everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. He can't leave you where you was. He can't leave you in that darkness. He can't leave you where you feel like you've been betrayed. He can't leave you where you felt like you was abandoned. He can't leave you in that loneliness. He can't leave you in that depression. He can't leave you in that rage. God says, go get her. The, isn't it amazing that the moment you get saved and you start trying to be serious about God, that God all of a sudden gives you assignment upon assignment? Why? Because he's searching. I will make you a fisher. Yes, sir. See, you've been out there fishing them fish. See, you don't realize, ooh we? I'm about to make you a fisher of men. Everybody say, I'm a soul searcher. I'm a soul searcher. See, I tell you, tell you, shall not God avenge his own elect who cry day and night unto him? Man, that's something about praying at a time that the Lord knows that your body is like, ooh, we I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. Man, I feel like if I go to bed right now, real talk, I'm talking about me. If I go to bed right now, I'll be out. Real talk. Any of y'all feel like that? Like, real talk. So, so look what he says. He says, you think God is not going to avenge the one he chose because they're crying out to him day and night? Look what he says. And he's watching you cry out. That you think vindication is not coming? Oh, yeah. Vindication is coming. Look what the word says in verse number eight. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find what he's looking for? Shall he find? Will we know? The scripture says he came to his own, and his own didn't even receive from him today. His own show. I mean, it was just like the way Joseph's brothers was. They showed up and they fulfilling the dream. And they showed up to get from the one that told them they was going to do it. And they couldn't even see him. And Joseph recognized them though. But they didn't recognize him. It's something about being in the will of God, man. The scripture says that you will not be ignorant. You will not be ignorant of the enemy's attacks. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Everybody say, I cannot be ignorant. I cannot be ignorant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's turn real quick to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Glory to God. We got to be so sensitive, man, when it comes down to those people whom the Lord is sending us to. You could be so excited about the glory, about meat, about strong and good milk, man, like a strong milkshake that's packed with protein of the gospel. 
and you get around people who are still on milk and you got to be, you can't be reckless with that word that you got. Because you got to be able to recognize who has an appetite to handle what you carry it. Who can handle? Y'all was in class today and I, I was teaching this lesson about perspective. And I was saying, I believe I was in my, uh, what period was that? It was my fourth period class. And I realized it was on it. Everything I was doing that today, it was like on it. I said, you know what? I think I need to skip a lesson with y'all. And it was like, what you mean? I said, I want to give y'all something a little bit challenging. I said, does this seem easy? I said, everybody that feel like this easy, give me a thumbs up. 85% of the class. I said, all right. Let me give you a little meat right now then. Let me give you a little something. So I gave them a, a, another assignment. And then I had two young ladies that was like, I'm finished, mister. I said, wait, hold up. Let me see. Okay. I got something special for you. I grabbed that paper. I said, let me. I gave it back. And when I gave it back to her, I said, figure that one out. She did her head like this. I say, uh-huh, I got you. Y'all, you got to understand. They got some people that you can give them that word, and they're like, done. You can give them some instruction, they're like, I got that too. Ah. And then all of a sudden, Jesus said, oh, you got all that? You got all that? Go sell everything that you got and come follow me. That boy said, Jesus said, uh -huh. He said, then you will have true riches. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. yes, sir. Y'all, y'all, we gotta understand that everybody say everybody's at different levels. Everybody's, everybody's at different levels. levels. And we gotta have an understanding with this. Y'all watch this, y'all. Look what Paul said in verse number one. Verse number one, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual. Because I understood you're still carnal. That's amazing that somebody could say, I want to receive this word, and you got to be able to discern just because they talk like they're excited. Remember, they, what do they have on the inside of them? A lot of times, just the seed is begging for life. Remember, Jesus told a parable about the seed that fell among the thorns, among the stones. And, and when they heard the word, immediately they get excited. But because of what's in them. See, sometimes the reason why people can be excited because of what's on them. See, you just came in my presence. So now what's on you is I'm, I'm feeling different while I'm around you. But then when you leave, I'm like, I don't feel so good. I didn't realize. You mean to tell me something that somebody else had? But when what you have is no longer just on you, but when it's in you, then you start realizing, wait a minute, I control this atmosphere. Oh, my God. I can make the adjustment. I understand that the thermostat is saying it's piping hot like I could die. But wait a minute, but I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I could say... This is a test. Now, I could really say that. This is just, everybody said this is a test. This is a test. Scripture says if you run with the footmen and if you get weary or tired, what you going to do when the heavy horses show up? He said if your faith fail or your strength fail in a day of adversity, your strength is small. Y'all, we really supposed to be preparing. We're supposed to be girding ourselves up. Being tired is like a small thing compared to what it could be right now. Praise the Lord. He said, I re look, look how Paul, listen to how he, how he talks with discernment. He said, I couldn't speak unto you as if you were spiritual. I understood that no matter how much excitement you got, you really ain't there yet. He said, but I could speak to you as if you're carnal. He said, even as if 
you're a babe like you're walking around with a spoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look what he says in verse number two. I have fed you with milk. I was giving you the basic. I gave you that first assignment. You got, whoa, you did that. Gave you that second assignment. Oh, you got that too. Look what he says. I fed you with milk. But I couldn't give you the meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. And look what he said. Look at the discernment. You hanging with me. He said, but I know even right now you can't really handle that real truth right now. I'm not going to run you away. I'm going to let you keep walking with me. But I got to be careful of what I expect from you. Do y'all see this? Yes, yes. Why is it? Verse number three. Look what he says. For you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying. Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, I know you're not cussing while you're with me. They got certain things that come up on you while you're with me. He says, but they're still envying in you. Still carrying strife, man. They got something in you that's trying to cause division. Do y'all see that? Paul said, I know all of this is there. Look. Sometimes people could be speaking things thinking that they're bringing about compliments, but you're really exposing the fact that there's envy and there's strife, there's division in you. You're thinking that you're telling somebody, I, I'd rather talk to you. I don't want to talk to that other person. And you're thinking the person you talk to, if they're young, if they're immature, they're like, yeah, I like you too. And they look at it like it's a compliment. But what you're really doing, you're really throwing shade on the other person. Paul says, wait a minute, there's envy, strife, division. He said, are you not carnal and you walk just like a mere man? Haven't matured yet. Hallelujah. You wonder why sometimes we got certain struggles we go through? Because we're growing up. We're maturing. See what it feel like to be tired and still show up. See what it feel like to be tired and still go home and be faithful. See what it feel like to be tired and to lose your job and still. Yo, yo, you know, it's one level of faithfulness when you got your job. But you lose that. That's a whole nother level of faithfulness. It's one level of faithfulness when you got that boo. You know, it's that person that you love and you hold on. It's a whole different faith when you ain't got them no more. That one that you thought was going to always be there for you When they're not there It's like I'm giving you another assignment yes, sir. See, Can you handle that one Hallelujah. That boy here <laughs> And then somebody Look even that last one I gave the young lady She looked at it I said you got the concept I said but you're backwards I said look at it Sometimes y'all you can't have somebody to give you every single answer. Sometimes you got to back off them enough to let them figure it out. I knew what the answer was. I could have gave it to her like that. I said, uh-huh. Because I knew she started feeling pretty good. Like everything was, this is just an art class. I did that last one for her. I walked away from her. And I walked away. She was. But it was good. Because guess what? Even though she feel like I'm giving her something that's challenging her, my mind is, oh, I'm preparing her for a contest now. I'm preparing her to be seen by the whole school. Because she carries something that everybody else don't have yet. See, there's seasons that you recognize that a person is ready to shine at this level. When everybody else taking baby steps, you got some people that are take a big giant step. Yes, 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 sir. And they're letting you know in so many words this is my time. I'm supposed to be here. Yes. Hallelujah. It's talking about that boy Shador Sanders that went and bought a hundred and what, hundred eighty million dollar car, something like that, like a like a Maybach Benz. And this dude in college, they got certain things that will reveal and expose the greatness that's been on the inside of you. I'll be listening to some of those. Some of those interviews 
listen to the way Deion Sanders talk about his son. He always say, this is just new to y'all, but I've been like this with my son. My son been doing this. It's just that it's on a, a broad stage right now. Everybody else is finding out what I've been new. And then I listen to Shadur and say, my dad been telling me this. My dad, man, I just, if everybody listen to my dad, he know what he's talking about. And man, that just warms my heart. See, some of y'all don't really understand. But when you start having children, boy, and you start realizing that your child could say something that pleases the mother or pleases the father. And you didn't have to coach them. You didn't have to say, now you know somebody coming by the house. Now you need to say something nice about me right now. No, but when they can say it on their own. What does that do to a father? What does it do to a mother? And my daughter told me something today. She texts me out the blue from Rome. Boy, she texts me something today. She said, Dad, I love you and I miss you. Boy, I felt like I wish I could have stepped out the door. She <laughs> just took her straight to Rome. Because sometimes when people don't know what you're going through. Yes, sir. Don't you ever think that your words don't carry nothing? Everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. So your words matter. Your words matter. He said, man, there's still envy and strife among you. Division. He said, you're still carnal because you're walking like a regular man. Hallelujah. But now I'm about to talk about a different level of people. Drop down to verse number nine. Everybody say, we soul searching. We soul searching. I'm in one class, y'all, and I got about three groups of kids that can handle different levels of assignments. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. One classroom. Three groups, all of them in the same class. Yet I can tell that they can handle three levels of assignments. And the ones that can handle a more difficult level it's like slim. It might only be two or three of them in a class of about 40. But then they got another group that's right on their heels. They almost there, but they're not there yet. And guess what? A true teacher got to know how to teach each one of them on their level and that the ones that's on the first level don't feel disqualified by the ones that's ahead of them. And all of a sudden, I start realizing just with these Lord assignments, all of a sudden, kids come running to me. Check this, mister. And they form in a line because now something in them wants to know that they do it right and they want to know if they please pleasing to me. Everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. Yo, it's deeper. I don't care what the setting is. There's something that you're carrying that's much deeper than what the immediate condition dictates. It's way deeper. It's way deeper. Everybody say way deeper. Way deeper. Y'all look at verse number nine. Here we go, y'all. This is us right here, y'all. Watch this. Verse number nine. Hallelujah. Sister Nisa, why don't you go ahead and read that one for me, baby? First mm -hmm. Corinthians 3 and 9 reads, For we are God's fellow workers. Who we are God build. God's building. Oh, man. Oh, boy, this, this scripture is so powerful to me. Sister Sabah, can you read that same one? Read verse number 9. For we are laborers together together with God, yet are God's husbandry. Husbandry. Husbandry, uh -huh. yeah, or God's building. Listen, y'all, he says, we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry, like you are his craftsmanship. You are, you're the one that he's been working on. You're the one that he's been preparing for this moment. And then he says, you're his building. He didn't say you're his wood. He said, you're the building. As time. He didn't even say you a house. Right. He said you're his building. Who's being fed? Who's being found safe around you? He said you are God's building. And look, look how all of a sudden I shift. Because I'm telling y'all, he's talking about 
He's a soul soldier. Look what he says in verse number 10. Brother Bosco, read verse 10, man. Watch verse number 10. Oh, glory to God. Boy, this is so powerful. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 10. By the grace of God has given me. Yeah, hand it to him. Hand it. I laid. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. Read it one more time, Bosco. By the grace God has given me, I laid the foundation as a wise builder. Mm. And someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John, won't you read that verse number 10 also, man? Hallelujah. Verse number 10, he says, According to the grace which God was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built on it. But let each one take heed how, how he builds on it. Man, he says, according to the grace of God which is given. Do y'all realize the grace that's given to you? The grace that's given to you. God says to each one, a measure of grace is given according to the gift of Christ. He says, according to the grace of God was given to me. He says, I'm not just called to be a builder. He says, I'm a wise master builder. Like I'm an architect. Like my job is to build according to the pattern that he set. Yes, sir. I don't know no other way. I don't know no other shortcuts. I only know one way. Look what he says. And I have laid the foundation. And now it's like a contractor that says I've done the part I chose to do. I got some other people. Y'all come on. Go ahead and do the electrical part in this building. Go ahead and do the sheetrock in this building. Go ahead and do the framework. He says, another laid the foundation, another build on. But look what he says. But let, let every man, let every man understand this ain't no regular building. What we building is not just for no anybody. Ain't no darkness coming here. Be careful how you build with this. He said, let every man, hallelujah, take heed how he builds on it. And look what he says, verse number 11. Verse number 11. Go ahead, Minister T. Verse 11. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Which is Messiah Yeshua. He says, wait a minute. He says, I'm telling you what I'm called to do, but I'm not deviating. Everybody say, I'm not deviating. I'm not deviating. Everybody say, I'm not compromising. This I'm ain't, not compromising. This is not a time to compromise. Because I didn't, how many of y'all feel like you didn't compromise enough? You didn't, yes, you didn't, been, I know what's out there already. I done been there. Guess what, y'all? Just like how I feel like I'm tired right now. I'm more tired of how I used to live when I was in that world. Amen. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm dead on that. Amen. Done. But no other foundation can no man lay that is laid. Y'all, we're going to a different level, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Drop down to verse number 14. Sister Jaden, won't you read, catch that verse number 14? Oh Hallelujah. Where's the microphone? Y'all get her? We're going to move. Praise the Lord. Verse number 14. Then every workman who has built on the foundation with the right materials and whose work still stands Ooh. will get his pay. <laughs> Can y'all hear that? Nisa, read that same one. Verse number 14. Ooh, verse 14. Hallelujah. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. Man, what are you building? He said, whatever you building, he says, if what you build stands the test, it means you built according to the pattern. That's why Jesus said, man, I'm going to consider you a wise man. If you take these words and you do them like somebody that built a house on a rock and the storms come, 
The winds blow. And that house still continue to stand. He talked about a house there, but right here he says, you're building. We're not done, y'all. Praise the Lord. But here comes that maturity again, man, because we soul searching. We're not just looking on the outside. We're going on the inside. Verse number 15. Why is this? John, catch that verse 15, man. Hallelujah. Verse number 15, he says, If anyone were to turn, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as a, yet as, yet as through fire. Yeah, 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 so as fire. If any man's work shall be burned, God says, some of the stuff you're trying to do may fail. He said, but even if it fail, it don't mean that I'm not calling you. Are y'all understanding that? They got some things that we try to do. And even though I say I love God, if I'm doing it not under his inspiration, there may be some things that still may fail. He says, if any man's work is burned, he will suffer loss of whatever he was doing. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. God say, I might let some of the things you're holding on to because you don't realize some of the things you're holding on to is stuff that you got when you was at a different location. Some of the stuff you're trying to use is the stuff you got when you was in Egypt. You're still thinking with that old mindset. And God say, I got to let that stuff I got to let it crumble. I can't let you survive. I can't let you, I can't let you thrive with that because that is going to further contaminate who you are. He says, so if it can't stand, it's going to be burned. Hallelujah. Look what he says in verse number 16, though. The reason why it's got to happen like that, look what he says. Know you not that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth where, y'all? Within you? There it is. In me. So now if I'm saying that God did it, but if God really didn't do it, <laughs> if I'm saying God did it, but God really didn't do it, it's like God say, I can't let you lie on me, son. I can't let you lie on me, my daughter. I didn't, I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to date her. I didn't tell you to do that with him. So now you might suffer some loss. But I'm going to still save you. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up and wrap up, y'all. Turn real quick to Ezekiel chapter 3. This is powerful. Remember how Paul said, I was with you, but all I could give you is milk. He said, because I can't even talk to you like you're spiritual. He said, because you're still carnal. He said, even as babes, y'all please understand, when you out in them streets and you trying to give somebody them heavy nuggets, Mwamba, man, don't forget who you talking to. You can't just give somebody them nuggets, because guess what? If now... If your boast is the fact that you're trying to show somebody how much knowledge you got, somebody could be lost because you gave them something that they weren't ready for. Sometimes you just got to love on people. Sometimes you got to give them a chance to ask you, how did you get like this? Now the door is opening. You got to give them a chance to say, where do you go? Who do you connect with? What kind of friends you got? Now the door is opening up. And if I give you a little bit, and if you can handle it, all of a sudden what's on you is starting to come in you. Yo, this thing about saving souls ain't no joke. You got to be patient with people. You know how long the enemy took? Building all that hatred and that anger and unforgiveness and impatience. They ain't got so that means that we gotta carry a grace with us. 
that will make them always want to come and talk to us, always want to come around. Sometimes they might even challenge you, Jaden, only to find out that as you continue to stand, they're looking at you like, how you did that? And all of a sudden, you look like an assignment that they wasn't ready for, and they're turning their heads sideways. Like how you was, T, when you was at Chick-fil-A. You realize how many people was turning their heads sideways? They still got people talking about you today. Because you're like a difficult assignment that they can't understand. But oh, when you start getting ready, and you start realizing, wait a minute. God sent that person. God prepared me for that assignment. Look what the word says right here, Ezekiel 3. And look what it says on 15, verse number 15. I'm going to back you all up to this. I'm going to start right here and then I'm going to back up and show you how he got here. Ezekiel said, then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv that dwell by the river of Cheba. And I sat where they sat and remained astonished. I can't even share the word of God for seven days. Just sat there listening, learning. People probably judging them. You with them, you doing that, and they don't even realize you planted like a tree. And they're just exposing everything to you, telling you how they live, telling you what they do. And they start looking at you like, you cool. They think you cool because you ain't said nothing yet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says that even a fool is counted wise when he don't open his mouth. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. You got to learn how to hold your peace. You got to learn how to be in a position where you don't feel like, like somebody judging you if every time you open your mouth, you're not just declare. You got to declare. You got to be able to discern who are you around. What can they handle? Everybody say, Lord, give me more discernment. Lord, give me more discernment. You see, I sat right there. What gave him the power to sit there and not do nothing? I'm seeing all this hell going on. All this stuff going on. Some of us can't do nothing, man. It look like they ain't going to want to hear the gospel. Let me, peace, I'm out, y'all, I'm out. God said, wait a minute, suppose I sent you there. God said, wait a minute. Sometimes it's not about what you want to do. God says, it's about sometimes what? The, why did I send you there? Why did I send you there? I sent you there for a reason. Okay, let's deal with this real quick. Let's hurry up and close out. Hurry up and back up to uh, Ezekiel 1. Man, I'm going to show y'all something, boy. Watch this. We're going to see discernment. We're going to see transition. We're going to see growth. You don't just wake up and become that mighty powerful force that nobody will know. There's a, there's a time that you grow. You develop. You learn. You submit yourself. You learn how to trust God. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel 1. Look what it says right here in verse number 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives. Wait a minute. Ezekiel is already around the captives. He said, I was among the captives by the river Kibar that the heavens were opened. You're sitting there with them people and God will start speaking to you right in the midst of it. All of a sudden you're in a zone, like you zone out, like you ain't encapsulated, like you like you gone, even though they got all this cussing going around, all this bondage going around, and God say, come here. And all of a sudden, God give you something that help you to endure, making sure that what's in them don't get in you. Yes, sir. Oh my God. What he says, y'all, verse number two, in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity. Verse number three, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, which our Bible say. Wait a minute, Wait, I thought Ezekiel was a prophet. Right here it says he was a priest. Before he became a prophet, he was a priest. This means that God was still growing him and maturing him. He knew how to approach God.
God, but he wasn't released yet to have the mouthpiece of God. Yes, sir. He knew how to go to God on behalf of the people, but now God says it's time for you to go to the people on my behalf. There's a difference. He says the word came expressly to Ezekiel the priest. Son of Buzi in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar, and the hand of the Lord was what? What y'all Bible say? It came on him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. It came on him. He felt it, man. The atmosphere just changed. He's here for a reason. Praise the Lord. Came on him. Now let's switch over to chapter 2. Y'all try to hurry up so we can be done. Y'all watch this. Chapter 2, verse number 3. Uh-oh. Here we go, y'all. Matter of fact, let me back up. Verse number 1 in chapter 2. Look what this word says. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon your feet. Some of us talk about how much we really want to have these experiences with God, man. We got to we gotta position ourselves. We got to, y'all, that's why Paul said, I, I want to speak to you as spiritual. He said, but man, you still got envy and you still got jealousy. You still got division on the inside of you. Y'all, this is the time that we got to learn how to pray and say, Lord, they got some stuff in me that I don't even see. I don't even know. Father, reveal it. And when you say reveal it, sometimes he's not revealing it by a nice pastor or a nice apostle to come and tell you. It might reveal it by a boss coming to you saying, you're late. And you just got through praying, talking about, show me what's going on. And God is like, I'm being faithful, but I need you to understand, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, stand up on your feet right now. Be ready to be accountable. Look what he says. Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. Uh-oh, verse number two. And the spirit did what? Into, into, into. Wait a minute, wait a minute. In verse one, it says the spirit was upon me. Yes, sir. Verse number two says, Spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and set me on my feet. See, this is why sometimes, while we, even though we might be tired, the reason why we still got here, because he put us on our feet. The reason why we're able to walk and even though we wish we could go home sometime, is something about him putting strength in us to say, you carry out what I called you to do. Learn how to be obedient in the midst of the affliction. And don't worry. My reward is with me. What you building, if it stands, there's a reward coming. Hallelujah. Everybody say, my reward is coming. My reward is coming. He said, set me up on my feet. And look what he said. And I heard him that spake unto me. Verse number three. And he said unto me, son of man, I'm sending you to the children of Israel. I'm sending you to the children of Burundi. I'm sending you to the children of Missouri City. I'm sending you to the children of Houston. Hallelujah. To a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even to this very day. Hallelujah. God said just because I'm sending you there, I don't expect you to be ignorant of where I'm sending you. God said, I know what type of people I'm sending you to, but I need you to be in a position where you don't listen to them. I need you to hear me. This is what God is saying. Listen to me. What would have happened if David would have listened to his brothers when he went on the field? He would have went back to the sheep, but they didn't realize. God said David. He was listening and obeying what Jesse, his father, told him to do, but then there was a time that David said, wait a minute. Y'all don't understand. Those times y'all thought I was just keeping sheep. Man, I've killed lions and bears. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine defying the armies of the living God? Who you gonna listen to when the odds look like they're against you? Who you gonna listen to when it look like them giants coming against you? He said they transgress against me even to this day. For they are impudent, they stubborn, stiff-necked children, stiff-hearted. And look what he says. Yeah, I'm sending you to them. Everybody say, I'm that one. I'm that one. Come on, yo, we got to still say, we started off strong, said, I'm that one. He came and got me. He came got you for some work. Glory to God. He came got you to send you out as a laborer. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First, what was that? that was verse number. Okay, verse number four. I do sing you to them. And you're going to say to them what the Lord said to say to them. Verse number five. And they, whether they will hear you or whether they will forbear. Because remember, they are a rebellious house. But look what he said at first in verse Number three in chapter one, he called him a priest. But this time he says, I'm sending you the people that's going, a lot of them go reject you. Yes, sir. He said, but even though they might not change, you already changed. Hallelujah. I'm sending you out as a different man this time. Look what he says. They're a rebellious house, yet they're going to know that a prophet has been among them. Praise God. Everybody say, I'm changing right now. I'm changing right Yo, you gotta now. You got to receive this. You got to receive this. Verse number six. And you, son of man, here comes the encouragement. You will not be afraid of them. Amen. Neither be afraid of their words. Even though briars and thorns are all around you. And you do as dwell among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words. Nor be dismayed when they're looking at you in their head turning sideways because you like a difficult assignment that they can't figure out. So don't be afraid of their looks. Though they be a rebellious house. Verse number seven. And you will speak my words. Whether they hear or whether they forbear for their rebellious house. Verse number eight, but you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Be not rebellious like them. Like, do not let what's in them get in you. Hallelujah. Be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Look what he says. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Hallelujah. Once that spirit comes on the inside of us everybody just take a moment right now and just begin to say Lord I welcome your spirit to live in me I welcome you Lord God I welcome you hallelujah because when you got his spirit in you guess what y'all your appetites start changing you start being able to obey things that you couldn't obey at one point you didn't have an appetite for it at one point some things are changing. Y'all are standing to your feet. Some things are changing. Y'all, as you're standing up, begin to say things are changing in me. Things are changing in me. My life is changing. Are I'm changing. experiencing a shift in my life. There's transition going on. I've been a royal priesthood. But now he's starting to call me to my purpose. Understand your purpose. Begin to declare, I'm going to be well rested tonight. Hallelujah. Well rested man, the rest that I get tonight, man, is going to be like three nights rest. Hallelujah. The rest I get tonight, I'm going to be well rested. The Lord says that he would restore the years that was taken from you. I receive it right now, Father. And because of all this experience, this is why Ezekiel was able to sit right there with the captives for seven days. And that boy just. Seven days. Somebody talking about somebody cheating on him. Somebody talking about how they broke up with him. Somebody talking about somebody died. That boy said seven days. Somebody talking about how they're trying to get some money fast. Somebody talking about how they want to kill somebody. Somebody talking about they confused. They talk, somebody else talking about they want to commit suicide. Seven days. <clears throat> it comes a place in time, y'all, where we want to be so obedient to the Lord that if he ain't telling us nothing to say, I ain't saying nothing. It's the same man. 
Hallelujah. That he said, go down to that valley full of all them dead bones. Son of man, can these bones live? Lord, I don't even know because I ain't saying nothing that you saying. The Lord said, I permit you. Speak to them. Tell them what you want them to do. He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And all of a sudden, bones start coming together. He didn't just say that they jumped up and it was at attention and they got weapons. He said, no, they, things start coming together by the words they were speaking. Speak the word. Speak the word. Learn how to be silent when you're supposed to be. But when the Lord tells you to speak. To you, you might feel insignificant, might feel like your voice cracking. But in the spirit, it's like a roar. Yo, be restored tonight. Be restored tonight. You are that one. You are that one. Hallelujah. 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 